Ganavor, thank you for staying with us. On this segment of the show, I get to free my mind. Say it as it is. But today, on the back of the kind of day we've been ushered into, which is why I'm clad in this outfit today, I want to take not up to a minute, but a moment for us to reflect on the life of Dr. John Kuma, the Ejisu lawmaker who now has met his maker. Like I shared this morning, so let's all, as we remember him fondly, also remember that someday we shall go. Which is why Ghana 4, moving on from there, some things irk my spirit, make me angry. Accountability in this country is zero. Look. I have set time without number. One of the areas where we get to milk our economy the most is sports, which is why this morning I want to talk about when sporting budgets make no sense and the bill degenerates into a circus. My take. When sporting budgets make no sense and a bill degenerates into a circus. My take. Now, until we get to the point where we get surgical, incisive, with asking people in power, especially in our sports and in other arenas, when it comes to politics, to account for the minutiae of spending, we'll always see corruption on the ascendancy. How? Look, we've been told that for the All Africa Games, infrastructural in expenditure, Bottom and Sports Complex, $145 million. I'm not talking of CDs, I'm talking of dollars. And I'll make a point. The Games Village, $16 million. Who is quantifying? Who is giving us a breakdown of the figures to account for the fact that messes so-and-so, this contractor did this, and we put this in there? That is, what, that is what civilized jurisdictions do. And you account for every last dollar, cent, red cent. Because this doesn't make sense to me. The University of Ghana Stadium. I schooled in the University of Ghana, undergrad for my LLM and everything. I've done so many things there. I've seen that stadium up since when. Now, all of a sudden, we are told that $34 million was expended not to build or put up the stadium or renovation works and this and that. Christ me! In 2016, eight years ago, less than eight years ago, the entire Cape Coast Stadium was put up for $16 million. One six million. And don't tell me, I'm not talking CDs. I'm talking dollars. Even if you do appreciation of currency or depreciation of our currency, $34 million is two times $16 million plus $2 million to spare. And no one is talking about this. And yet we'll come back and say, oh, corruption. <laughs> uh, we had the, the, the Anas exposés and everything that happened in between. So we know, we know, this is a story. But when will it stop? Now, Professor Ezit Chumesi, the former head of the NSA, has been moved aside. That guy, the things that came up during his tenure and how he stayed on, only God knows but me. I will stay away from that issue. $195 million. That's almost a third of what we hope to get from the IMF every six months or so. Wake up, Ghana, for smell the coffee. It's brewing. It's percolating. It smells heavily. Fail to smell it. Don't complain about corruption. Don't. Are we blind? And no one asks questions from the Gold Coast Australia bit to so many things that keep happening, even the budgets of our national teams and all of that. Sometimes I say, Mama, come ya. And so, I say, Oh, what can I do? Manu Bukiti. Next slide. Now, $47 million to cover the operations of the local organizing committee. $47 million. Let's not even multiply this by the 13, right? <laughs> Let's even multiply this by 10. 470 million Ghana cities. Hey! If you ask for a breakdown to a... What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Anyway, let's go on to the next slide. Now, moving away from sports, right? I just wanted to vent. I had to vent because some things don't make sense on the sporting front. But let's come to this whole LGBT thing. Look, let me tell you this. 
There's a lot of hypocrisy going on. Me, I've made my stance clear. I know people who are gay, and anyone who knows me knows that my stance is simple. Biblically, homosexuality, or anything tied to that, no way. Me, that is me. But at the same time, you will not dehumanize or take away anyone's humanity on the back of any such legislation. That's my simple stance. Me, gay, homosexual, lesbian, da 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 Man, fam, fam, lie. That's not me. But should we protect them just the same way as we will protect even murderers and our constitution? Because now we've taken away the, the whole thing about killing, you know, um, capital punishment and all of that. So in between. But then today I want to do some ju juxtapositions and sometimes go back in history and come back and find out whether mm, people are not shifting the goalposts a bit or are they sticking to what they said, what they represented. Ghana's anti-LGBTQ bill reaction so far. The finance ministry says we risk losing about $3.8 billion of World Bank support. The IMF monitoring event. They, they are monitoring how things are panning out. President Akufuado, he says he's awaiting the Supreme Court's decision on the bill before any action. But let's go to the next slide because it makes for a very interesting reading. I have learned that today, and you see... Uh, that member of the MPP's manifesto committee, I spoke to him during the news review, Mr. Labi. He came on and he was trying to massa. Don't take us for fools. Mr. President said, I have learned that today, speaking on the fourth day of March, today, a challenge has been mounted at the Supreme Court by a concerned citizen to the constitutionality of the proposed legislation. In the circumstances, it would be as well for all of us to hold our hands and await the decision of the court before any action is taken. Mr. President, are you a justice of the Supreme Court? And by the way, do you have a crystal ball you can look into and, hey, you're the case, Biko. Hey, if you could do that, I think you could have done magic with our economy, oh, Mr. President. Because as of the 4th, when you were speaking, guess what? There was no such suit. And here's our proof. Next slide. The proof is in the eating of the pudding. Because the suit in the Supreme Court of Judicature and the Supreme Court of Ghana, Accra AD 2024, with the whole Kominini there, dated the fifth day of March 2024. So how did Mr. President know? Wow. Ghana 4, let's clap for Mr. President. <laughs> Mr. President has become clairvoyant. He can look into the future now. Let's clap for Ekufuadu. So that's on Mr. President. Next slide. Now, on that same bit, if you look at what happened, passed in Parliament Tuesday, March 29, 2022, minority files case in Supreme Court Wednesday, 30th March, and then President Akufuado, and that's 2022. President Akufuado has since Thursday, 31st March, uh, 2022. And that has to do with the E Levy bill. You see the different strokes for different folks because Mr. President says, oh, there's a case in court. So be, I don't go touch him. I don't go touch him. And I don't want to sign. I don't want to get Wahala Plus, you know, the, the court system. But when it came to the E-Levy, look at the trajectory. There was a case in court. Mr. President, boom, signature, signature. Young court. Why the disparity, Mr. President? Next slide. But then... Of course, you would see here in the Superior Court of Judicature as well. Back then, Hauna Idrisu Mahama Yariga Samuel Kujatua Blackwa, 30th March 2022. That's when Senior went ahead and boop, signed off on it. But let's go to the next slide. Because in talking about this, you also look at some of the elements who have been speaking on it. Recently, we heard of that instance in Parliament. Our reporter was there, parliamentary re correspondent, Kweku Asante, was there. Listen to Afinio Markin, make mention of a citizen, private citizen, to go ahead. Even went ahead to mention a name, and everything followed. And of course, I don't want to talk about whose firm who is working in. That one, you know, my case, you know, my wahala. But Richard Delaskai, who has taken this matter to court, saying, and I'll, I'll look at all angles, yeah? Saying that he wants to test the law and constitutionality and all of that. Some have said even, from the very basis of it, that it ought to be thrown out. Why? It's not even an act. It's not been enacted. It's not law. So based on what is the court going to act? Based on a bill that has not yet passed, will the court even do that? But that one, I'll leave it to the courts. I'm not a justice of the court. 
and I don't mean to suggest anything to the court, clearly. But Richard Delasky, on the 9th of June 2011, said uh, that he had just received a shocking email from a self-confessed homosexual based in Accra. Folks, can you imagine? The young man is asking me to help him lead what he calls quote, a sustained media campaign to pressurize Ghanaian authorities to recognize gay rights in all forms. Massa, I beg you in God's name, please try elsewhere. In fact, if there's anything I abhor most in this world, it is homos. God punish you. For me, I feel while I have a specific stance on this, I feel this was somewhat homophobic. These are human beings. And I don't know whether in trying to rope them in or make them anything else or maybe even leave them as they are, but see what influences. It's like Christianity, right? Even when trying to proselytize, you don't go, hey, hey, you must be. So I don't know. It sounded a bit, but that's his opinion. Respect that. But in 2012, he adds, gosh, President Obama endorsing same-sex or gay and lesbian relationship. I'm really scandalized. He has brought the name of his father and Africa, in my view, into disrepute. Let's fast forward to 2024. My own uh, brother, Richard Delasky. This action is not a declaration of my personal stance on LGBTQI+. He clarifies, it's not a declaration of his personal stance, individuals per se, but a conscientious effort to ensure the strict adherence to and protection of the constitutional framework that governs our society. Whatever that may be. But... You read between the lines. I'm not here to read for you. I'm putting the lines there. Read between them. Next slide. But there's been all this talk about, oh, if you go the way of that, hey, World Bank cash, Yamutu. Oh, IMF cash, you know, go, come. And, 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 and. While those elements are there, let's look at what is true and what is not. Now, African countries with anti-LGBTQ laws but still enjoying smooth IMF programs. I always like to look at both sides because it could happen, but it also, on the back of precedent, could not happen. How about that? Uganda has probably the most draconian LGBTQI plus law in the world, I think. 2014 crackdown in, uh, crackdown in 2023, then life in Prison, that's the maximal term. The year law against the same-sex marriage, 2014, and the crackdown happened in 2023. Maximal term, life imprisonment. But the, the IMF program, 1 billion since June 28, 2021. In fact, the tranches released $120 million released after their fifth review. Fifth review, March 2024. This very month. Well, let's look at others. Zambia. 2005, cracked down in 2023, maximal prison sentence, life in prison. We don't even have anything close to that. Three years, five years, and all that. IMF program, 1.3 billion from 2022, August. Tranches released, second tranche approval, December 2023. And total disbursement so far, $561 million. Cracked down in 2023. In 2024, they are still getting money. Next slide. Senegal. 1966, all the way back, of course, uh, a largely Islamic country. In 2022, lawmakers decided not to pass a draft bill that sought to toughen already severe laws against same-sex relations because they already had it. Maximal prison term, five years, kind of like ours. IMF program, $1.5 billion since June 2023. How much have they got? Senegal received $279.31 million from the IMF after their first review, December 2023. Looking forward to their next review and another sum of money. Next slide. So when you look at all of these, Uganda and all these other countries, Senegal, among others, um, something doesn't add up, right? So what exactly is going on? You know me, I put the information out there. You do the thinking. But in the midst of all of that, Ghana's anti-LGBTQ plus bill, this, I saw him in church one of these days and I, I smiled on my head. Gabby, uh, I like his beard, though. I like the way he keeps himself. And I love the way he keeps himself trim at his age. It's, it's very becoming of a man uh, like him. You wouldn't even know he's as old as he is. But, but I, I disagree with him a lot of the time. The biggest threat to family values in our society is caused by side chicks and side dudes. One so side chickism, side dudism, anyway. 
They break homes and family values cannot survive in broken homes. But our MPs don't care, do they? Hey, Jagabi. Uh, that's what he's saying. Do you care? Well, the president was speaking about values at the, the Independence Day, right? Uh, does he care about what Ghanaians think about LGBTQ as well? Regardless of what their thinking is. But let's, let's come also to Sam George. There's some disparity. If my paddy bachelor, when it comes here, <laughs> paddy no day inside. But yo, fine, 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 fine. <laughs> I will give you a nice haircut. Um, 2015, my good friend Sam George said, irrespective of my personal opinions on homosexuals, the constitution of this country still remains supreme. And the constitution of this country enjoins that everybody has rights and that their rights must be protected. Must be protected. In the law, we we'll say shall be protected. 2015, before the NDC left power. 2021, homosexuality is not a fundamental human right. Show me where in the 1992 constitution it says that sexual preference is a fundamental human right. The laws of Ghana are clear. Everybody has rights and that their rights must be protected. Homosexuality is not a fundamental human right. Show me where in the 1992 constitution it says that sexual preference is a fundamental human right. The laws of Ghana are clear. I'm putting the information out. Read between the lines. <laughs> okay, next slide. And this will be our final one. But even to advance the conversation further, some would ask, even in places where there's a lot of talk about LGBTQ and community and this and that, what is happening there? That's what we often miss. Come with me. Ghana's anti-LGBTQ bill, in light of states in the U.S. that have sodomy laws, which also feeds into it. If you sodomize, we have laws on sodomy in Ghana, in, in our constitution and in the, the criminal uh, act. But now we are adding on. But, but look at this. Florida, Georgia, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Massachusetts, Michigan, Mississippi, North Carolina, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Texas. How many are those? One, two, three, four, multiplied by three. Twelve and counting have sodomy laws. So, for example, when the American ambassador, Virginia Palmer, comes to say, oh, and if you do this and that and the business community and trade and this and that, ma'am, in your own backyard, hmm, okay. So th this is me. I, I know I'm being a bit mischievous this morning, but I like to put information out there. Think through them. I'll remind you, corruption in sports is mammoth in Ghana. Let's deal with it. Let's not play the ostrich. Let's not pretend. NDC, MPP, they are doing the same thing. One more than the other, but they are doing the same thing. Shine your eye. Let's go there. Civil society groups, think tanks, let's do this. And again, LGBTQ. Let's be fair. Let's look at the different angles. I've stated my Christian perspective. It is my opinion. But then again, let no one be maltreated or mistreated on the back of that. This has been my blunt thoughts shared with you this morning. Raw, hot, unedited, undiluted. Meme dear Charlie. Maka, maka. Pai muka. Maka, maka. Maka, Benjamin Akako is my name. These are my blunt thoughts. Thank you for watching.